Hey guys, so we're gonna be looking at drawing electrical fields today. All right, so I'm gonna draw a couple of them for you and in the end we'll even connect a couple of them so that you can see what that looks like when we are drawing the fields. Now you've been introduced to the idea of fields already. We looked at kind of the big picture and you've looked at gravitational fields. Remember that a field is just the area of influence of a particle or an object, right? Uh, masses, just by having mass, they create a field around them that anything placed, any other mass placed in that field is going to interact with that object, okay? Same thing with a charge here. A charge creates a field, okay? It's not a field made up of something. Uh, you could think of it as being made up of something ethereal or something, I don't know, but just, just the idea that it has this area of influence and anything that's placed in this field would then interact with the object, all right? So uh, four rules that you want to follow as we're drawing these field lines. Rule number one, the number of lines needs to be proportional to the charge, and you can decide how many lines that is, but I'll give you some kind of rules of thumb later. All right, number two, lines should be evenly spaced when I put them around my charge here. Number three, the lines should all be perpendicular to the surface. And number four, the direction of the field, the direction of the arrow, needs to show what would happen to a positive if a positive were placed there. Sometimes we say it would show what would happen to a positive test charge. All right, and so that word test charge or point charge sometimes is what we're referring to is, is what's being placed there to see what would happen to it. All right, so I'm going to show you what this would look like for a couple of different objects here. Notice I'm going to do a, a plus, so a positive one. I'm going to do a positive two. And then last of all, I'm going to do a negative three. Now I'm going to keep all of that in mind as I go through each of these. So the first one is a positive one charge, and you've learned a little bit about that. We haven't talked too much about the units, but you saw in the lab that the units were coulombs, the C. That's what the C represents, is coulombs, and you saw that hopefully in that lab. Um, but, oh yeah, not in the lab yet. That's next. You'll see that in the next lab. Um, so what I want to do is, this is a positive one charge. I want to create some lines here. Now, you really shouldn't ever make less than uh, two or three lines, right? Anything less than that, and you're really not going to be able to see what the field looks like. So I would say your field needs to have a minimum of four lines, okay? So what I'm going to say is that a plus one is worth four field lines, okay? So I'm going to draw four lines here. I need to make sure that they're evenly spaced. All four of these are gonna go around this, evenly spaced, and they need to be perpendicular to the surface. So I'm gonna draw those first. So I'm gonna put one here, one on the other side, one right here, and one right there. So you'll notice I've got four lines. They're evenly spaced as best as I can, and they're all perpendicular to the surface there, okay? And then the direction shows what would happen to a positive. Well, if I placed a positive here, if I took my positive charge and I put it here, what would happen? Well, we know that opposites are going to repel. And so it would go just kind of straight out like that. And so that then should be what happens to my positive charge. The same thing will happen in each of these, right? It'll go out like this, go out like this, go out like this. All right, so there you go. We've got a field. This kind of gives us an idea of what the field of that positive charge looks like. All right, let's go ahead and look at a plus two now. Now, remember that number of lines needs to be proportional to the charge. All right, so a charge of plus one had four lines. What that means is that a charge of plus two should have eight lines. So this time I'm gonna draw eight lines. All right, again, I want to evenly space them. So maybe I'm going to put on the two first, and then I'll go three, four, and then I'll split each of those like this. All right, I recommend that you don't have one going straight out the middle, just because that makes the final step that we're going to look at here when I combine two of them together. Sometimes it makes it a little bit challenging. You can do it if you want. You just kind of have to figure out what's going to happen with that middle guy. But you'll see here. 
Um, so I've got eight lines, they're evenly spaced, I've got them all perpendicular, and again, what would happen to a positive if I placed it here? It would get pushed out in that direction, right? So, just like this. All right, now, what you'll notice is, we mentioned this before, that when the lines are closer together, it means the field is stronger. Now, that should make sense. Being close to a positive 2 should result in a stronger, whatever, stronger force, I guess, than being right next to a positive 1, right? So, the lines are close together, so that means a stronger field. Notice that as they get farther out, they do spread out, right? So, obviously, out here, it's going to be a weaker field than when it's right close to it. We'll put this into connection with the forces in just a minute uh, in our next video. But for now, let's just visualize the field. All right. Now, here's my last one. I've got a negative three. Okay. Now, the negative three. Hmm. Negative three. I had four lines for one, eight lines for two. So now three is going to need 12 lines, all right? So again, I'm going to do my best to evenly space them. It's usually helpful to start with four and then work from there. So I need two in between each of those. I'm doing my best to make it perpendicular to the surface. Okay, maybe I'm going to move those around just a little bit so that they're a little bit better evenly spaced. That looks pretty good. They're all pretty evenly spaced there. You can always adjust them as you go. All right, so I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 there. And this time, uh, remember the last step is make sure that the direction shows what would happen to a positive charge. Well, what would happen to a positive if I put it near my negative? Well, it's going to be drawn towards the negative this time, right? So your lines should be coming in like this. Just like that. So hopefully, it's not exact, but these rules need to be followed. Okay? So I have 12. All right, I got 12 lines, which you'll notice makes it even more dense than this one. So I expect a stronger field close into the middle. Okay, you'll notice that the lines are evenly spaced, that they're as close to perpendicular to the surface as I can. And last of all, that the arrow is pointing in towards that charge because a positive would be attracted to the negative. Now, the last thing I want to do is I want to say, well, what if they're together? What would happen if those two things are together? Well, let's get rid of this line here. What would happen if these two guys were actually close to each other? What would the field look like? Okay. Well, we're going to start with the ones that are close in. All right. So we're going to start with the lines that are close in. So this one would go out. Yes, it would. But eventually, the farther I get from this plus two, the more attracted it is going to be to that minus three. And so at some point, it's actually going to curve in to that minus three. Notice that around it, those still have to be in the same location, but I'm going to start curving it as it gets away. So it is straight, but then it's going to start curving in. And this one probably should be something like that. I'm going to change that line just a little bit, but you get the idea that it's going to kind of go in like this. The next line here, is going to need to go into the next line there. The next line here is going to go into that guy right there, right? All the way around. So this guy is going to go up and then it's going to come down right there. This guy is going to go down and around, right? So every single one that can be connected is going to be connected. Okay, if I were to put a particle here, it would start being, so I put it by this plus two. As it gets pushed away, it's going to feel less from the two because it's weaker out here. But it is going to start to feel that pull of the negative three. The farther I get away, if it's the same distance from these two, 
it should make sense that the negative three is going to be more important than the plus two. The further you get away, the closer you are to those two distances being the same. And so this is going to then bend around and come back over to the three. And so I'm going to do my best to connect each of those as much as possible. And then this guy right here, he's going off the page. And then he's going to come back in right here. And notice that as we get farther away, the field is getting more spread out. The field is getting weaker. Over on the end, I still have these guys. They're going to follow more or less the curvature, but they're not going to connect in with these guys. Your field lines should never, never, never cross. All right, so that's something to be careful of. Just make sure that the field lines never cross. They're going to connect and come back in, but these lines out here will never, ever cross because that would mean that at that point, there's two different things the positive charge could do, and that's not the case. No matter where I put that positive charge, you see that these guys are coming out and in there. If you want, you can always add in more arrows just to kind of remind yourself of the direction that it's going. But that gives you a little bit of an introduction to drawing fields and recognizing how to kind of put them together and understand what is happening between multiple objects. All right, that's it for, that, for uh, electric fields. I'll see you in the next video.